Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis wa da'eef wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. And alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life and a, a gift of this immense love for His Divinely Presence which equates itself to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known and will always be a hidden treasure. And wanting to be known through Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah is known and glorified and magnified by creation. When we say, SubhanAllah to the oceans, to the mountain, to the birds, to nature, to everything. And the greatest of Allah's creation is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And the one who draws near to that love and to that ishq is drawing near to Allah's wanting to be known. So it's a way of what they call marifa. So alhamdulillah that Allah enrolls us in this school of ishq and muhabbat and good manners and good character. And by means of good character and ishq is the only way to draw close to this reality. All those that stand firm to their worshipness, their prayers, their washing, their cleaning, all of the, the jurisprudence and from that door they enter into the ways of Divinely love and Divinely good character and draw near into the Divinely presence as a gift from Allah and the month that opening inshaAllah by Sunday, Monday the holy month of Rajab, Tarul Ajab that is a month that Allah is for Allah means that that's a month in which Allah grants immense bounties and immense lights. And that's the reality of 63. So the seventh lunar month the immensity of seven, seven tawaf, seven verses of Fatiha. So the, the seventh month must have an immense reality. And Allah draw that month that, that is my month in which I'm going to give to my creation which no, no one knows and no one can say no to what Allah gives because nobody is entitled to know it. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. What Allah gave. So the immensity of Allah's gifts and bounties and no one gift is similar to another. And subhanahu man huwa khaliq nur is the hijab and the zikr in which Allah eternally dressed upon from the seven, the twelve veils, the seventh veil that is always dressing the light of Nur Muhammad Subhanahu wa man huwa khaliq nur that this is the month in which, ah, glory be to the one who creates light and created lights. Divinely lies which the infinite spectrum of lights. So this is a month of seclusions, a month of immense worshipness, immense good deeds because Allah is giving the reward. The month of charity, the month of fasting, the month of, of zikr, the month of prayers. Every good deed Allah is rewarding in this month from Divinely Presence. With the, without even the need of prophets and angels to understand Allah free to give without cause and effect, without limitation. 
So then this is the month in which seclusions and intention for seclusion, the month in which to isolate and to go deep into realities and propagate uh, the love of Prophet then has an immense blessing. So it's encouraging for ourselves in, in Rajab, Shabban and then take our gifts in the holy month of Ramadan. So we're now entering into the three holiest months of marifa, of realities, of immense blessings, immense dressings upon the soul in light of all the difficulties coming upon the earth. We immensely pray that Allah dress us, bless us, complete His immense favours upon our souls, our family and our communities for the difficulties that are coming upon this earth that gives everyone more encouragement, Ya Rabbi there's no time, please grant us your ni'mat and your blessings, your endless lights. By means of these lights becomes a protection from us, an illumination for us and to be illuminated through difficulties and hardships and every type of darkness that coming upon the earth then is an immense blessing that Allah to illuminate the heart of His believer from the casting of spells and blackness and darkness and difficulties that the, the, the negative energies wish to impose upon this earth. And one of the realities that is important and the spiritual path that is described by the word insan which is humanity is insan is what we are from ins and this is our human nature and that when Allah creates something and calls it that creation insan the being then there must be a reality in even its micro understanding which would be the huruf because Allah comprised that word from powerful letters. The understanding of the huruf gives us the depth of the understanding of what Allah meant when He created insan and how to reach to these realities. InshaAllah we have the insan for the… I don't know if the camera can see it. Can you guys see that? Yes Sayyidi. Huh? Yes. No. Okay, write it. <laughs> write it. Writing, so you guys who are taking notes inshaAllah you can write it. So then when I go over it, because then I'm going to read it. We're writing Sayyidi. All right, got it? And son. <laughs> what I got here? No. Alif, Noon, Seen, Alif, Noon. Means in this reality of the huruf, we're starting from here and we're trying to reach towards the izzat of Allah the alif. So the target is to alif and insan has a nur, has a light. So these are two noons in insan. And in the middle of this word insan, those who don't know Arabic, doesn't matter nobody knows Arabic but you still write it and then we'll go over it and then you can meditate and slowly get the understanding and the opening because the soul will understand. So then in, this is our spiritual journey described in the huruf. So when people say, where's tariqah? The tariqah is everywhere but they have to have eyes that see and the eyes that see are the eyes of the heart. So Allah puts the tariqah even in the kalam and the huruf of the kalam. So now we'll understand that this noon is a nur, is a light. 
And that's why everyone of us come into existence from a rahim, from a womb. And that rahim, when that child is born, that creation is given a noon and a light. So we're under the sifat of Rahman. So they came from a womb, they were given a light and they became a part of creation which is now insan. Our life's journey is, is not only this nur to nourish that light because everyone has a light but they live a life like a temporary light is to reach towards the seen which is the secret. So we have a secret in our existence. If we can reach to that secret what opens for us is another noon. And this noon this is a nar, a fire like the sun and like the stars. And this is the one closest to the Divinely Presence which is the alif. So it means inshaAllah our life is to achieve our lights. And Sayyidina Yunus because this is coming from the story of Sayyidina Yunus Jonah and the whale. And Sayyidina Yunus Allah gives the example of Sayyidina Yunus and awliyaullah from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad begin to explain the immensely deep reality that Sayyidina Yunus was given to do his da'wah and call people to Allah But as a result of calling people they come, they listen, they're not interested and they go away. Then they began to bother. Eventually Sayyidina Yunus describes that, it's enough, I, I'm, I'm going. He leaves his post, he leaves what Allah has ordered for him. And as a result he's leaving and takes himself to an ocean, gets on a boat, goes to the ocean and the ocean begins to show its anger from Allah The people of the boat say, there's somebody on this boat that must be angering the Divine, the Presence and we must cast him off. So he said, let us make some sticks and who pulls the shortest stick will be the one who we cast off and Sayyidina Yunus again got the short stick, the short end of the stick and <laughs> he was cast into the ocean. And then in that ocean a hoot, hooti, a whale came and swallowed Sayyidina Yunus And in the belly in the depth of the whale which was a learning experience for Sayyidina Yunus he called out to his Lord in forgiveness and in the oceans of reality, La ila anta subhanika inni kuntum minal dhalimeen, La ila anta subhanika inni kuntum minal dhalimeen. And Allah said, whomever calls to us and admits their wrongdoings, we grant them a najad. And we accepted his prayer and the whale went near the shore and spit him out. But the depth of that reality is that when you don't have enough light, the light that you have is like a moon. And it's not even a full moon, it's a, a light that coming out for people they sense that you're nurani, that you have maybe some light but that light is not strong enough to affect other people's lives 
barely enough to affect your own life, more or less affecting the lives of others. So from the heart of awliyaullah they give the spiritual understanding that Sayyidina Yunus had to go back into the oceans of rahmah and mercy and that the to complete the favours of Allah upon his soul cast into the oceans of Allah's Divinely lights and that Allah's Divinely oceans literally for the souls are like oceans. That in their seclusions they see the different oceans that Allah has and the soul walks into that ocean as a silhouette and a being of light. And as it walks into that ocean it's disappearing in the knowledge of that ocean. So in spirituality the symbol of fishes are the souls because every soul swims in the oceans of God's grace. There's the oceans of grace, oceans of knowledges, oceans of repentance. All of these realities were the symbolism and the symbol of the soul is a fish. And Mawlana Shaykh would describe that, be like a fish in Allah's ocean, not like a rock. A rock it just takes nothing and goes all the way to the bottom. But be like a fish in which when you observe the fish, the fish actually thinks in every breath it's going to swallow the entire ocean. You see how they open their mouth very wide and they swallow the whole, thinking each each movement of their mouth they'll ingest the whole of the ocean into their wujud and into their build, into their being. And Mawlana Shaykh said, take the character of that reality that when you're entering into the oceans of Allah we're not asking for a little, we're asking, Ya Rabbi let me to swim in your oceans, in the abundance of your ocean in which it has no limit. Allah won't be short on anything that you take from that ocean. So the soul has an immense excitement entering in the oceans of Allah and that it's lost in that ocean of ishq and love, muhabbat, grace and knowledges and it wishes to consume the entire ocean of its knowledges and realities. And as a result there's the souls that are like fishes. And then there are the souls that are like awliyaullah and huge awliya, they are like the whales of that reality because they are the keepers of the reality of who. And that they don't go up and down in the ocean but the whale dives very deep for long periods of time. Means the immensity of their training because of their ability to go deep and to seclude and to enter into these realities, they're symbolically symbolized as the whales of the oceans of Divine grace, light, mercy. Whatever ocean Allah is going to put somebody in, the whales of that ocean, they are like the kings of that ocean, that they swim deep in its reality and they bring everything into its mouth and into its being. Again was symbolizing that when Allah is going to dispense a teaching as He dispensed for Sayyidina Musa salam, means that the prophecies below the prophecy of Sayyidina Muhammad was in need of Sayyidina Muhammad because each of them to a state of imperfection. <coughs> As we understood that Sayyidina Musa on this journey, he wanted the knowledges of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah the knowledge of the two rivers, the two oceans of reality. And he took himself to that journey and until he reached Sayyidina Khidr which is the Muhammadan representative. And he wanted the Muhammadan knowledges for completion and illumination of the heart because the sirr and the secret of all light and the light of all secrets is Sayyidina Muhammad And every creation because they can't say, my title is something different, Allah says, no they're insan. They all want to reach the alif of Allah 
and they have all of them a moon and a sun. Most barely, most creation barely even open the light of their moon that they can reflect, right? Because you have to love a Prophet, you have to follow the example of the Prophet. That's why in our book The Rising Sun is the book of guidance. So how many people on this earth follow guidance? Probably 1%, 2% that aren't idol worshipping and, and worshipping of, of humans and statues and real guidance less than 1% and that's why Allah gives the example on the horizon then within yourself. Look to the sun and the moon, they're the symbol of movement of guidance. Then awliyaullah come and teach, well Allah gave us the sun and the moon also. Said, the moon is your head and the sun is your heart. But if you want to rise to guidance and at least become somewhat similar to a moon, you must be following a sun. So who follows a sun on this earth? Who follows the source of light and disciplines themselves to be consistent to follow the light? So we see that every year becomes less and less and less but that is the way of Gnosticism and Marifa. So that at least the noon and the, the light that Allah gave to us, don't let it to extinguish, don't let it to become nothing. That you have to illuminate that first noon, that moon within your reality. And I have to follow the sun which is the second noon closest to the alif. So it means everyone to begin to spark their reality, this noon they have to follow a sun. Who's, who's your sun? It means what? The first son everyone Allah wants is, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So this alif is, La ilaha illallah and this son and illumination of light is Muhammadun Rasulullah He's the son of all sons, he's the, the divine the fire because sons are stars and they say, where's the dalil shaykh? I said, because Prophet described, follow any of my companions, they are like a sun on a dark night because all of creation is dark. But my companions are like suns. What does that say about Prophet if his companions are sons then he must be a sun maker. The ability to produce sons is not something small. The ability to destroy the mass of people, the mass of their planet and to reduce them to a star then is immense reality. So then the journey is then to that fire. So guidance is that, my noon Ya Rabbi I have to be facing that light, my life is to move towards that light, nothing else. And it becomes our entire spiritual path. As soon as the noon awakens and the light of a person awakens the moon of their reality that they want to reflect Divinely lights, they don't want to reflect their, their friends, they don't want to reflect their environment, they want to reflect that which is not from heavens. I mean that which is not from the earth but from the heavens. They want a light outside of this earthly understanding. Means then it is showing and laying out the spiritual path for ourselves. Then they come to the tariqahs and that's the alif before the seen. Because Allah guides those noons, those moons in the making. Is it more easier to, to say noon or moon? So the moons in the making 
What's, what's before they get to the secret? In the seen there's an alif. Why? Because Allah wants now to make them into a moon, you have to be with the ulul am. There are three izza and powers on this insan. There's the atiullah, <clears throat> and then in this noon next to the alif is nar, there's an alif in here in that noon, right? <laughs> then they have to come to this alif because a nar, how you spell nar? Huh? Noon alif ra. No, so she say has alif. You're looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. So has an alif here, right? So there's an alif here, atiullah, atiya rasul, wa ulul amri minkum. So anyone who wants to be a moon has to follow a ulul amr. Because they carry a izza, they carry a might from the might of Allah to the might of Prophet and they inherit the ulul amr, they carry amr. As a result of following guidance because this is a symbol of an insan of realities, the ulul amr the real ones whom have Allah has ignited their power of guidance because this is from the teachings of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's heart. The ones whom are going to be from these ulul am, they're going to take their students into the secret. So they'll get the student, direct them to be like a moon. Say, stop following this, stop following that, stop doing this, focus on Prophet right? Because you know planets are not supposed to be going in different directions and the moon has to be istiqam, firm on your path. So direct your face one direction directed to Prophet which is Allah then Prophet because Prophet has to be the light, the guidance, the sharia, the, the way, the example, the sunnah. As a result they direct you into that reality and into the sirr and to the secret. And every creation has a secret from Allah And we've gone over seen, right? The seen like a W, it has the knowledge of certainty. So this ulul am because not every shaykh is a ulul am, no matter what they think their title is or how prestigious they think they are, not every, every creation is a sun because everyone wants to think they're a star. But this is the reality of that huruf, that that ulul am is going to take them to the sirr and to the secret. And the ulul am must be training them in the knowledge of yaqeen. So they must be trained in ilmu yaqeen, not external, ilmu yaqeen, the knowledge of certainty. And that's why we posted all the realities of seeking knowledge. YouTube, watch YouTube and, and learn your basic sharia, how to wash, how to, to do your salah, how to do all these things. But come to these ulul am to teach you the haqqaiq of your salah and the haqqaiq of your wudu because that's kindergarten, this is now beyond PhD. The Muhammadan haqqaiqs are something completely off the scale. So these ulul am they're responsible to teach you the secret, ilmu yaqeen. You have to be fed the knowledge of certainty, ilmu yaqeen, you have to be a certain you have to be a student been trained 
on your vision. How to open Ayn which is ancient knowledges and Ayn of the heart, the eye of your heart. So that's a very specific training how to open your heart, how to contemplate tafakkur, how to take these ilmu yaqeen and the knowledges of realities, how to contemplate so that it becomes what? It throws you into the ocean of haqq yaqeen. Means that you hear this and you start dreaming of whales. You close your eyes and you see yourself entering into an ocean surrounded by whales or even taken into the whale. Means that the knowledge it becomes a truth for that servant. They understood the knowledges, they've trained themselves in ayn and vision and closing of the physical eye and opening of the spiritual eye. Not everybody is going to be meant for that, uh, just because you're enrolled in it doesn't mean the person to the right and the left of you and you go to the, the, the zawiyah, you go to this, you go to the masjid, you go to the place and everybody's in the same understanding. Not everybody's enrolled in that knowledge because we said it's less than 1% even trying to follow a light, more or less Allah enrolling them in the perfection of insan which is Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's reality, immense reality. Because this is his teachings of ilm huruf and this is the secret that they've given to shaykhs. Says, any one of my 7,007 shaykhs will have 12,000 specific knowledges inherited from me. So what happens then? They are given ilmu yaqeen, ayna yaqeen, they're trained in how to open their heart and then they be thrown into the realities of haqq yaqeen because they understood a reality, they trained to witness it. As they get glimpses of it, it became a truth burned onto their soul. As a result of that haqq yaqeen they're now approaching the nar. Right? The next noon that's coming in front of them, this noon, they came as a moon, they went to the Ulul Amr, the Ulul Amr trained them, ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen, haqq yaqeen. For what? Because as they open the sirr and the secret within their heart, who are they facing? The nar, because this one he is not a moon, Prophet he's an immense sun, immense reality. So his, his noon has a alif. So nar is that he has a noon, he has a alif, and he has a ra, because he's the highest of these arbab. shining lights. And as you draw closer to this noon, because as you draw closer to the sun what happens? It burns everything away from you. Because this noon is not enough to guide people. So when they don't have a connection to this nar, Shamsun narun wa qamarun noorun, right? Shams is a nar and qamar is a noor. I mean one is a reflection, one is a light. The nar, the sun is a light, it's a reflecting light coming out. The moon is merely a reflection of light. And his Wasallam's light is from the alif. So they say, where's tawheed? Because people want to say, how come you don't teach fiqh? This is all 
this is your most advanced fiqh, right? Because this is La ilaha illallah, this is Muhammadun Rasulullah Ya, You can never be in the proximity of, right? There's no shariq even in the madhab of Mahtududi, right? With their the Maturudi is Iranian. These are the, the ulama of uh, Fars and Khurasan. He says, there's never shariq, there's never a shaykh. Don't ever try to make a comparison to Allah So this is the way of marifah, is that no way you're going to reach here. It's enough of this alif and the izza and might of Allah is the fire making that sun. Right? Because that's fusion, that's love. When Allah's might and majesty dresses His favoured creation, what happens? It burns away all mass. E equals mc squared. E is energy, it equals mass and c squared are two lights. Not Mahdi's explanation that C is this and C is that, those are very technical things. But this reality of C means light squared. So in the formula awliya gave these scientists is that if you want to reach the energy there's mass and two lights. So what happens when you approach the sun? The sun burns away all mass. So anything with a mass that's coming towards the nar, the reality of nar is it burns everything away. So in the moth to the flame, so they say, where we heard these? We heard them in every song, in every poetry. Be like the moth which is the first noon and come to the flame of realities, right? Because when they came there they became lost in this love of this light that reflecting from the reality of Prophet The sun, Shams al-Marifa, the sun of all realities, the sun of all suns, S-U-N, mean the light of all lights. From the light of that sun every other sun is in existence. So scientists say, we do have, we have the sun of our galaxy, we have suns of our universe and then at the center of this entire created galaxy they have what they call a pistol star. They're so powerful, so massive, billions of times larger than our sun. And what Allah gives to us in Qur'an, a tariq, similar to what Western people understood of pistol star. And a tariq because it piercing, Allah describes that a tariq is a piercing sun, means that its reality, its photons or whatever scientists are calling the elements of that reaches the entire created universe. And from awliyaullah understanding it's that light is the Wi-Fi of all creation, it is the source and power of all suns. Because Allah burns and illuminates Muhammadun Rasulullah and every other subsequent light is within that creation of Muhammadun Rasulullah so then this is an immense haqqaiq and a reality for Mawlana Shah Naqshband. And one of the realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshband is the caretaker of that secret. That the pearl that is being dressed by that nar is under the dress of who? And Mawlana Shah Naqshband, one of his realities is in that ocean of marifah 
His nazar is upon all of these pearls. And Allah gave His soul a power in which to recite the zikr of who with no break and intermission. These are spiritual powers. And with that zikr of who and the nazar of His holy soul is then dressing and illuminating those pearls. To be given that secret and the sirr means that Mawlana Shah Naqshaban has to place that pearl and it doesn't matter what tariqah, what religion, everything has to be under the authority of Alif and Noon, La ilaha illallah and that nar, that sun is Muhammadun Rasulullah Without the authority of Prophet there is no secret of that reality, much lesser secrets that's from dunya. But that sirr and that reality is under the Muhammadan kingdom and under Muhammadan control and guard. And it's one of its realities is Mawlana Shah Naqshaban in which his holy soul is continuously making the dhikr of who with spiritual nazar upon these pearls, illuminating, safeguarding, dressing, whatever Allah is, is, is directing that soul to do because the souls are under the command of Atiullah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. It's by Izzatullah, it's by Izzat Rasul that the Izzat and Mu'mineen is, is derived from the Izzat of Allah and the Izzat and, and might of, and the direction of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's all one continuous flow of realities. So as a result of that secret and that illumination anyone whom requires a stronger light of guidance then must be under that reality. So not everyone is, is, is entering into that nar and into that reality. Many remain just the nur, they reflect and they have tabarak and blessings and they reflect they're good people. But the way into that reality is very rare and the way to be dressed by that pearl is even rarer. And those whom are dressed by the pearl they become sons on this nation because that nar is sparked within their being. And as a result of being sparked within their being they are like a fire illuminating, not reflecting, illuminating fires. <coughs> That's why then awliyaullah described that when Sayyidina Yunus and Sayyidina Yunus salam needed a light that was not a reflecting light but needed a light that would, a, would gather people, cleanse them of ignorance and dispatch them with guidance. That was then the reality that he was cast into that ocean and the soul of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban is then present in that understanding of the whale in which brought him into his reality, dressed him from that reality, trained him in that reality and granted him Zul Noon, ignited his second noon. And as a result when he was sent back onto the earth he was no longer Jonah but he was called Zul Noon the two noons because the two noons had now been activated and this is from the realities of insana calm and that reaching the perfection of what his reality was meant to be under the Muhammadan kingdom and in Muhammadan lights. As a result of the sun everywhere he was teaching people were coming towards the guidance. We pray that Allah grants us from the, the depth of that reality that within just the word the whole of tariqah can be understood and everyone should understand their roles based on this kalam of insan. That if they're given a light and everybody's given this nur and reflection their life is to point towards the sun, point towards the, the, the most powerful light point towards Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad. That's why they point towards, La ilaha illallah and who's in front of you? Muhammadun Rasulullah 
That's why always Allah has us saying, even when you're making prayers you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah right? Because Allah is directing us that before you come to me you have to be in the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah Otherwise Allah would have just made you say, La ilaha illallah, why at every salah and every time and azan and everything because that's tawheed. Tawheed is that you have to bear witness there is nothing but Allah and Muhammadun is the Rasul of Allah So it means the immensity of that light and that dressing to dress the soul and to reach these illuminations and those who entered in that secret and began to enter into that nar in which Prophet dresses them and makes them to be like the sons of this nation. And these are Ishraqiyoon in the last days that the suns rise from the west, not from the east. Those suns are not in the east, the suns are in the west and that's why Islam would rise from the west and the sun would rise from the west because of the illumination and the knowledge is being taught in the western region. Free from the ignorance and closed mindedness of the east. That's why Allah's hikmah and wisdom because the east now is in maqrib, that knowledge has closed upon them. Look what they're trying to do out there. So the realities Allah safeguarded, transplanted and it would rise like suns because the illumination and the level of knowledge and realities and the depth of those realities they would be ignited like fires within their heart and their beings. We pray that Allah keep us among the ishraqiyoon and to raise our heart into the presence of Allah and the presence and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and all Ahlul Bayt and awliyaullah, Ashabul Kiram, awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa <coughs> bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.